Hi there, this is Dana. In this quick little tutorial, I'm actually going to be doing a little additional uh, freebie extra for one of my Skillshare classes. I'll put the link in the description for that one. It's about uh, using watercolor and stitching to make ornaments, but you can also do this for other projects such as Valentine's Day cards or greeting cards or birthday cards or whatever kind of card you like. This demonstration is going to be doing a little easy little Valentine's Day card. If you want more details about the techniques I'm showing in this or the materials, please do go check out that Skillshare class. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to be giving you just like a little mini freebie lesson for this so you can whip this up either on your own or with grandkids, whatnot. It's great fun. So basic materials you're going to need. I have two pots of water here. Any kind of container is fine. You'll see why I have two in a moment. I've got two different colors of red here, watercolor paint. I'm using M. Graham paint. I have the quinacridone rose, which is the lighter one. And I also have quinacridone violet. But again, any, sorry, zoom in there. Any colors, any watercolor brand, doesn't matter. It's fine. This is just what I happen to have. I've got a mini pad of watercolor paper here, the Hanamula paper. Again, any paper is fine, any size, any shape. And also I've got a needle and an awl. You can use a nail or anything like that to punch holes in the paper as well. I've got some scissors and I've got some thread, which we're going to be using as well. Sorry, it keeps going out of focus. There we go. Some thread and of course a paintbrush. I have a nice uh, set of pigeon letters, watercolor paintbrushes. They're really nice. They're vegans. So they're not using real squirrel bristles, but Again, any kind of paintbrush is fine. I'm going to show you a really stupid, simple technique. So yeah, this is going to be really fun and really easy, and I will get into it right now. So first thing you're going to do, I'm going to move the palette just out of the way for now. So you're going to get your paper. Again, watercolor paper is better for watercolor just because it won't buckle as easily as other types of paper will. But I also have a pencil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a really, really light little heart on here. It's going to be super, super light. You don't really want it to be showing through your, your paint, but if it does, it's okay. Just a simple little shape. I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but close enough. So what I've got here is I've got the two different pots of water because one's going to be for clean water, one's going to be for mixing my brush. So I'm going to pick up some of the clean water. Right now these are both clean. Pick up the clean water, get your brush nice and wet like that. If you have a little paper towel, I can help take extra, excess moisture off. What you're going to do is you're going to follow the shape of that heart and you're going to fill that whole heart in with water. So you have to move a little bit quick just so it doesn't dry out on you. You're going to kind of go as neatly as you can along those lines. If you wobble or whatever, it's totally okay. If you kind of look at your paper from a different angle, you can see where the water has been placed and where it hasn't, and whether it looks like a nice even coverage, nice and wet. A little bit of pooling is okay. All right, so I think I have a nice shape there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the lighter of my two colors, the rose. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the rose here. And I'm just gonna drop it in. You can see how the watercolor kind of spreads. It's really, it's really quite pretty. So the reason you put the water down first is it kind of pulls the pigment up in a really unpredictable way into that heart shape, which is really, really pretty. You can push it down as well. You don't need a lot of pigment for this, like even the amount that I have on my palette is way too much for this little project, but that's fine. The nice thing about watercolor is you can re-wet it once it dries in your palette. So you're going to push the pigment up. So it sort of fills that heart shape, looks really pretty, you can spread it around a bit. And while it's still wet, I'm going to grab a little bit of that darker pigment. You can rinse your brush off. In this case, I'm not going to because they are going to be blended together. Just grabbing a little bit of the darker tone. I'm going to put it down here. 
you can do this any way you like. You can use just one color. You can use dots of the second color and watch them blend. You can wait for it to dry and then add dots, which will make them a little bit more sort of, um, the shape will be a lot clearer to see. Get a bit of water. Fan these up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to rinse my brush so it's mostly just water. Add a little bit more water to blend these up. Get that nice heart shape going. All right, I think that's good. So I'm going to let that dry and I'll be back in a moment once it's dry. All right, so we're back. So you can see it's dried now. One thing you can do with watercolor is you can use a hairdryer to dry it. Uh, just be careful, though, that the hairdryer wind can actually like blow the water in different directions that you might not want. So just be very careful about the speed of the hairdryer. You don't want it to actually like blow the watercolor around. Or you might. It's your project. Do what you want to do. So as you can see here, what I've done is I've, in pencil, carefully, I've marked like little lines. I'm just going to make sure it's in focus. I've marked little lines just to say the beginning and end of each stitch so that I can kind of relatively evenly go around the project. You can do this in any way you want. You can just kind of wing it as you go or you can sort of map it out like I've done. And then what I've done too is I punched little tiny starter holes with the awl that I have. This is actually just a shaved down old screwdriver but you can use a needle or a thumbtack or whatever works for you. So this just helps you not buckle the paper as you're just trying to put your needle through. And I also switched out the needle to the one I showed earlier. This one has a bit of a straighter shaft, so it's not going to make a big hole in the paper. So as you can imagine, what you're going to do is you're going to start in one of the holes and then just work your way around your project. So I'll show you the first few stitches. Again, you can do this with any stitch. So just be careful when you're holding your knot end. Make sure you just kind of hold that because sometimes the knot can be a little bit smaller than the actual hole it's going through, depending on the size of your needle and the size of your floss. I'm using a nice shiny metallic floss from Krennic. A little extra sparkle. Um, so yeah, so you just don't want to hold too tightly. You may find you have to flip the paper over to find the holes easier. It's a little bit more different more different. It's a little bit uh, different than um, with fabric where you can kind of feel where the holes are with the back of your fingertips. It's a little bit different than that. So you, if you do have to flip your paper around, that's okay. Got a mini snag. All right, so I'm going to keep going around this. I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back when it's done. All right, there we go. Finished. Isn't it cute? So how to finish off the back with the threads. Um, you can choose either this one or this one to kind of run your thread under. And just do a really simple little, little knot. Don't pull it crazy tight because you just don't want to pull, pop out any of your stitches or whatnot. It is just paper, it's not fabric. All right, get that little snip. With the ends sticking up, you can either leave them as is because this is supposed to look handmade. Like that's why I didn't really measure any of these stitches out to make sure they're all even and perfect and all that. It's kind of not the point of this. The point is it's meant to look handmade. So much stuff these days is manufactured and whatnot. So you do want it to look handmade and look quite pretty. So you can leave these as is. If you're worried that they might get caught on something, then you can glue them down with a little bit of white glue or even like put a little bit of white glue on them and put a piece of paper over the back, just a little piece of paper to cover that or even a little bit of tape. That's fine. You can trim up the edges with pinking shears if you want to make it look super cute or if you have like neat edge scissors that would look really pretty. In the Skillshare class I go into other ways to embellish the cards like um, metallic or paint pens on top and all sorts of things you can do to make these kind of like little ornaments and cards really quite pretty. But as you can see, it's basically ready to go. So I'm actually going to give this to a friend of mine and I'm going to write a nice little note on the back and give it to her. I know she'll really like that. 
So that's it for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and I hope you have a great day!